All right, so I had some time and I was already on histology guide anyway. So you 233 folks are in luck. Uh, I'm actually gonna walk you through some respiratory system stuff. Uh, I got this fancy new app called Epic Pen where I can, if I click on this, I can do this right on the screen, hooray. And I can even choose colors. So I'm gonna choose not yellow, cause that's annoying. So now it's pink and then I can make the ink invisible or visible and I can erase. So this will make screen casting a bunch easier. So first things first, let's select respiratory system. So I'm going to switch to cursor mode. Let's go to the respiratory system section. And then we are of course going to, let's start with a trachea actually. So let's go to trachea. So now we have a picture of a trachea and we actually also have a picture of an esophagus, but we're not really gonna focus on esophagus right now. So what I'm gonna show you is the view from not very zoomed in, and then we're gonna zoom increasingly in and I will show you various elements of the trachea uh, and then we'll go over to the lung. All right, so let's start with this and I'm gonna switch over to my pen and let's just make it good old fashioned black. Okay, so over here, we have the esophagus. And this is the trachea. So remember, a trachea is an organ, meaning you can expect it to be comprised of two or more tissue types. And indeed, there are many tissue types here. So there's epithelium, there's abundant connective tissue, and then there is the cartilage ring. And this is actually of hyaline cartilage. So this is classic tracheal appearance. So where are you gonna find things? Well, you'll find the tracheal glands in this area, in the submucosa, just underneath the mucosa, which is the epithelium and underlying connective tissue. And then somewhere between the two tips of the rings here, so between here and here, will be the trachealis muscle. Um, and it's not always 100% straight across. Uh, as you can see in this picture, it's going to be a little bit fragmented. So we'll see all that as we zoom in. So speaking of zooming in, let me just clear my board and we will do that. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over to cursor and let's zoom in to 20X. Whoa, hello. All right, well, maybe I wanna go back to 10. This is a little bit big. So let's start with the edge here. All right, so right now I'm actually at 4X uh, objective. So this is 40 times bigger than it would normally be. And that's plenty big, it turns out. So we'll zoom in a little bit more in a minute. Um, so out on the outside here, we have our adventitia. So this is adventitia. And adventitia is of course primarily dense, irregular connective tissue, which is this stuff and this stuff. And then there is some fat as well. And that's this sort of lacy stuff here. Then this might even be a nerve. I can't quite tell from this magnification, so I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna zoom in. So let's do that. Nope, I was incorrect. That is gonna be fat also. Sometimes it's hard to tell if you're zoomed out, whether you're seeing uh, cross-sectional nerves or whether you're seeing fat, but this is definitely fat. Okay, so here we have our classic dense irregular connective tissue. You can also see the blood supply to the trachea. So here, right here is a tracheal artery and you can see other small blood vessels. 
so this has blood in it. All right, let's back up a little bit. Oops. I don't have much control over that slider, so we're going to go back this way. Okay. So this is very definitely hyaline cartilage, classic hyaline cartilage appearance. And I'm going to use my pen now. So this is a hyaline cartilage ring, and I'm going to put quotation marks around ring because, of course, it's not really all the way around. It's more of a C-shape. Okay, so moving right along, let's navigate to some other spots on this slide here. Now this space here between the cartilage and the uh, inner layer, so the mucosa and submucosa, this isn't really here. This is a tear in the tissue that is a result of the slicing of the tissue. So uh, don't look for that as an indicator of anything. It's not reliable. Okay, and then I'm trying to navigate to a place where we can see glands and the uh, epithelium in the mucosa looks good. And this, I think, is where we're at. So, do I have any areas I prefer? I'm going to back up a little bit and go searching. Just bear with me. I'd like to show you the best example I can find. Okay, I like this area, so I'm going to zoom in on this area. All right, so the mucosa, and let's use our pen to outline it. The mucosa is this. And the submucosa is correspondingly this. So the mucosa contains pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. And then under that, some areolar connective tissue. So those two layers make up the mucosa. Over here in the submucosa, there is abundant dense irregular CT, connective tissue, and we can see some blood vessels. So here is an artery, here's a vein, and then abundant tracheal glands. So I'm going to outline some of them in yellow here. So this is a tracheal gland. This is a tracheal gland. And in your list, I believe these are described as being seromucous glands. So tracheal gland is a kind of seromucous gland. So we call them a tracheal seromucous gland most correctly. Um, so you can see that they are epithelial in nature, as all exocrine glands are. And then in some cases, you can see the product of the gland in the lumen of the gland itself. So these are uh, exocrine acini. So an acinus is one of these globs. And then this stuff in the middle here is going to be the secretion. So now I want to go hunt for and hopefully find the trachealis muscle. So I need to navigate to an area of the slide where I feel like I'm likely to find it. Let me just be a thorough eraser first. All right. So I can see from my box up here that I'm over here, so I need to get to like here. So let's move towards that zone and hopefully we'll get some smooth muscle. Oh, look at this. Let's take a stop here just shortly. See how we have this large gland? And then we have some little protuberances, these two things in particular. This is a duct that lets the secretions from this gland reach the surface of the mucosa. So here is another one. That's pretty neat. Okay, continuing in our hunt for the tracheolus muscle, and I'm seeing smooth muscle starting around here. So this must be part of the tracheolus muscle. So let's continue to follow this smooth muscle. And I'm going to erase uh, this guy just real quick. Okay, there we go. So let's go back. So now 
when students begin first studying histology, they find that dense irregular connective tissue is hard to tell apart from smooth muscle, but I think now that they're side by side, so this is dense irregular and this is smooth muscle, the difference is pretty apparent, right? So here we have the tracheallis muscle. It appears to end right here. Yep, and there it goes. So that was it. That's all of the tracheallis muscle that you can see in this slide. So let's mark that up. And I'll draw a line around parts of it that I can see. Isn't that neat? Okay, tracheallis muscle. Perfect. Okay, so now that's about all there is to see trachea-wise. So I'm going to switch over to the lung slide. Oops. Forgot to switch to cursor. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to switch over to the lung slide. And I'm going to start with this one, I think. I'm just waiting for it to load now. All right, so some things of interest. A lot of you are asking me how I would know a uh, bronchus from a bronchiole, and I'm showing you this because there are very obvious features. So this is lung tissue, and actually let's choose this color. So these areas that look light, you'd be tempted to say they were fat, right? Because they look like fatty connective tissue, but they're actually areas where there are abundant alveoli. And I'm starting at low magnification just so I have good context clues for what I'm looking at. Uh, I can see that there are red stuff in here, which makes this a vein. How do I know it's a vein? Well, the lumen is floppy and collapsed. And there's some other blood vessels here and there. Now, this is a big chunk of hyaline cartilage. But it isn't a ring, it's a disc. Here are some more. So we know from our discussions of the histology of the lung that if something has uh, respiratory epithelium lining the lumen and doesn't have a hyaline cartilage disc, then it is a bronchial. And if it does have a hyaline cartilage disc, it is a bronchus. So that means that this whole thing is a bronchus. So now let's zoom in and check those out. Maybe, maybe we'll be able to find some uh, alveolar ducts or respiratory bronchioles or some other fun stuff along the way. But first, one must erase all the things. Okay. So let's zoom right on in. Whoa, hello there. Maybe back out a little bit. Yeah, okay. And I want to go up to the biggest bronchus. Here we go. Okay. So this is so far up that we've got a primary bronchus, and this one has some glands. So Trachea has seromucous glands in the submucosa, so too does uh, the bronchus, at least the larger ones. So let's zoom in on this so we can see the hyaline cartilage, which is here, making this a bronchus, not a bronchiole. So what I'm going to do, and note there is some blood in this lumen, but that's just because of the way the tissue is sliced and prepared. It doesn't mean that there's actually normally blood in a bronchus. And how do I tell? Wouldn't you think it was a vein or an artery if there was blood in it? Well, yeah, if the epithelium was right. But this is very clearly respiratory epithelium, not uh, simple squamous endothelium like blood vessels have. So that's how you know. Okay, so we have our main cartilage disc up here. And look, we have little bitty cartilages peripherally as well. Okay, so 
Well, wait. Those might be nerves. I think they are. I'm seeing some myelinated axons here, actually. I stand corrected. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in here. It didn't work. There we go. Okay, so we've got respiratory epithelium, very classically pseudostratified. So here we have... And note that between here and here we have loose connective tissue. So these two layers together make up the mucosa. This is a little bit of smooth muscle. So when there's a layer of smooth muscle outside of the mucosa, we call this a special name, and that is the muscularis mucosae. You can see little bits of it here. Okay, so that's that. Now let's go check out some serum mucus glands and check in about my assumption about whether these things down here are cartilage plates or whether they are nerves, because there are nerves that innervate your bronchi and bronchioles, so it stands to reason that we would maybe see some nerves here. Let's see here, we've got abundant perineurium. Yep, I'm gonna go with the nerve. Um, so how do I know? Well, notice how there are clear spaces I'm going to change my dot size. So here we have an axon, and then this white space around it is the myelin. And then surrounding this nerve very robustly is dense irregular connective tissue. So that is going to be the perineurium. So this is a nerve. Not, as I previously thought at lower magnifications, a cartilage plate. So it's always good to zoom in and check. All right, so surrounding this little guy are numerous glands and such. So let's move over here. So here we can see abundant glands. And these are serum mucus glands, just like those in the trachea. And then maybe if we're lucky, we'll find a duct. I think, oh, yep. So this is the duct for this gland. So that is a bronchus. So let's back up and go check out some other ones. I seem to recall there was a small one down here. Yep, so same constituents. We've got cartilage plates. And we've got respiratory epithelium. We've got glands. And we've got small blood vessels peripherally as well. So here's one. Here's a big one. So now I'm going to zoom out and go back towards the alveolar component, and maybe we will be lucky enough to find some uh, alveolar ducts and sacs. Oh, there's terminal bronchioles in here. So let's look at some primary bronchioles. So one of the things you can do that's nice about this uh, website I've given you, and if you haven't used it yet, oh my God, what's wrong with you? Um, is you can click on the blue things. It should navigate you over to one. Ah, yes, okay. So I clicked on primary or muscular bronchioles number one. So no cartilage plates as you can see, but abundant smooth muscle. So let's outline that smooth muscle, shall we? Oh, I didn't know I had more colors available to me. What fun. Okay, how about blue? So this is smooth muscle. Actually, I think it's easier to see in yellow. Yeah. So note, there's abundant smooth muscle. I'm going to trace the parts of it that I can see with my pen. 
all the way around this guy, uh, and it has a collapsed or stellate lumen because there's no uh, cartilage plate there to prop it up. Okay, so let's check out a terminal bronchiole, shall we? Oops, I forgot to switch to cursor mode. The software that I'm using to do this, by the way, is called Epic Pen and allows you to write over your screen. It's really cool and it's free. So if you ever find yourself needing to do something like this, um, it's a really good resource for that. There is a paid version where you have more features, but this is good enough for me. Okay, so let's go check out a terminal bronchial, shall we? Yep, here's one. So the epithelium, as it says over here, changes from ciliated columnar to cuboidal. So if we go even further in, we can see that this section is indeed cuboidal. But there are other sections that look ciliated, so we can actually see the transition here in this slide. So this looks more ciliated columnar, whereas this and certainly this look more cuboidal. All right, so that's terminal bronchial number one. Let's go see what number two looks like, shall we? basically the same thing. So transition from stratified, or excuse me, it's from simple columnar to simple cuboidal uh, and smooth muscle present throughout. And here we have an artery. All right, so respiratory bronchioles. These are a mixture of conducting epithelium. Let me move my Epic Pen menu. So this is a mixture of conducting epithelium and alveoli. So let's go to number one, shall we? Ah, this is perfect. Okay, so usually when you see one of these, you see about half of it because it quickly gives way to alveoli. So we have this is the respiratory portion. You can see there's alveolar cells, and then this is not respiratory. That is the epithelium that is not for gas exchange. So I mean, what I mean by respiratory, and I'm going to put an asterisk up here, is gas exchange. Okay, so let's go look at another example of this. So we can click on number two, just for some reference. Yep, same deal. So here we have simple cuboidal epithelium and it gives way and sort of dissolves into two alveoli in this case, one, two. All right, now let's go check out some alveolar ducts. Oh, that's a great one. So, Remember how I said it in lecture that it was sort of a hallway made of alveoli? This is that hallway. So this is an alveolus, and so is this, 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 and so is this. Now, why not just make it a tube? Well, the more surface area you have, the more gas ex exchange you can do. All right, and then let's look at alveolar sacs. Oops. Yep, here's one. So it's just literally the end of an alveolar duct. So this is the alveolar sac. So this whole thing. All right, and alveoli. Let's look at some specific ones. So how about number one? Uh, say it one. There we go. All right, so here's one classic alveolus. We've got uh, type 
one alveolar cells making up the wall. So these are flattened squamous epithelial cells. Type 2, this should say 2, there's an error on this page, I'll email them about that. Uh, these are dome shaped that project into the lumens. So an example of one of these is this one. See how it's a little bit domey? Those are the ones that secrete surfactant. So here's another one. You can't see the nucleus of this one, but it is one. So I'm going to actually, at this magnification, drag the screen around a little bit and see if we can't find some other examples of those. Yeah, there's a really good one. So this is going to be a type 2. And then this little guy with a flat nucleus is type 1. I was hoping to be able to show you an alveolar macrophage, but I'm not seeing any here. They're usually pretty big and obvious. This might be one. It's a little bit hard to tell. It's not quite as big as I would expect it to be. It could be a surfactant cell. It's hard to say. All right, and I think that's about all I have for you for the respiratory histology stuff. Uh, so enjoy watching that video and following along, and that should help you prepare for your lab quiz on Friday. Oopsie.